If you're making a video game and you want it to look more professional, fade effect is one of the easiest ways to achieve that. It can help you to do smooth transition between levels or simply improve first impression when player opens up the main menu. My name is Alex, I make video games and I teach you how to make them too. And in this video, I'll show you a system that is super easy to set up. It is perfect for fade effect and even can be used for very cool transitions like I made in this project. Subscribe if you haven't and let's begin. In my last tutorial, we made a very simple game where you have to protect a child from incoming danger. And it definitely could be better if we added some fade effect to boost up the tension at the start. You don't need this project to follow along and I'll show you everything you need to know. But before we start, this video is brought to you, well, by me. You definitely should check my complete game development course that teaches you how to make an RPG game from scratch, with skills, items, dialogue and quest systems, and so much more. Link will be in the description below. Now let's get started. To make a fade effect, you're gonna need a canvas. In this project, I already have one, but if you don't, you're gonna need to click right button, UI Canvas. The next step when you have a canvas is to go to scale mode and change it to scale with a screen size. Otherwise, your UI elements will be affected by resolution of the game. So for example, if I change it to 4K, my UI elements will be even smaller. And if I change it to Full HD, it's going to be bigger. We want to avoid that and let Unity handle the change of UI elements. So we go ahead and do scale with the screen size. Now it doesn't matter what resolution do you have, it's going to be always the same. Now as a next step for fade effect, we're going to need an image on the canvas. I'm gonna click UI image and I'm gonna call it UI fade. Then let's take the image and stretch it so it covers up entire screen. We can hold shift and alt and click this icon over here and then adjust the color to whatever you want. If your UI elements are above fade image you just created, make sure it is all the way down in the hierarchy on the canvas and then it's gonna be fine. Now to make a fade effect, we have two options. We can either change alpha of the color on the image or we can change alpha of the canvas group component. And it's a bit faster to set up with a canvas group, so let's do that. I only want to arrange it a little bit better because we might want to have other images on UI fade screen. So let's make UI image. It's going to be UI fade image, which again I'm going to stretch and change color to black. And then on the parent game object, I will remove image. Now when you change alpha, it will change alpha of the UI fade and all children in it. So if you want to add another image there, or maybe an icon, you can easily do that and canvas group will affect all of them. Now let's go to UI fade and add component of a new script and I'm gonna call it UI fade. Inside of this class, we need two things. We need reference to canvas group itself, canvas group, let's just call it canvas group as it is, and we need duration of the fade effect, how long it will take to change alpha of the canvas group, so let's name it as fade duration. And then to implement the logic, we're going to use a coroutine. Now if you've never seen coroutines before, it can be a bit confusing, especially if you're a beginner, but don't worry, I'm gonna explain everything along the way. Let's type i enumerator, this is how you create a coroutine, and it will add system collection namespace to the top over here on itself. But if it doesn't, you'll have to type it manually, otherwise it will not work. Now we need a name for this coroutine and I think I'm gonna just name it as change alpha coroutine and then uh, we need to pass a variable over here which will be target alpha. The point is if we try to make image or UI element transparent, we need target alpha to know what we're trying to do with the canvas group. If you're trying to do fade in effect, your target alpha should be zero and if you try to do fade out effect, your target alpha should be one. So let's go back and work on this. The main thing you should know about coroutines is that they allow you to pause the execution for some time. As example, this coroutine would debug message start, wait for two seconds, and then it would debug message end. If you change this to yield return null, it would simply do start, wait for the next frame, this is what yield return null does, and then it would debug message end. But in our case, we're going to do something completely different. We're going to make a while loop and while loop works until conditions in parentheses are met. And for this while loop, we're gonna need to know fade duration, which we already have. 
and maybe let's make it equals to 1.5 by default. And we also need float time passed to keep track of the time. Usually people type something like time elapsed or just time, but I find it a bit confusing, so I'm gonna do time passed if you don't mind. Now, as a condition for the while loop, we're going to have while time passed is less than fade duration. Now we have two goals inside of this while loop. We need to increase time passed just so we can keep track of the time. Basically, we need to make a timer that works for a certain duration and we need to change alpha of the canvas group component. These are two goals we have. Let's set up timer first. We take time passed and make it equals to time passed plus time dot delta time. If you prefer to write shorter one, you can do plus equals. That is an option as well. So what we do here is we add time dot delta time to the time passed. And time to delta time itself gives you time in seconds it took from the last frame to the current one. And if we combine that with yield return null, which I told you about before, this one waits till next frame basically, right? So if we combine that, what we do is we take time in seconds that it took from last frame to the current one, add this to the timer and then we wait for the next frame. On the next frame, we take the time it took from the last frame to the current one, add it to time passed and wait for the next frame. Because of that, we essentially create in a timer that works while time passed is less than duration, which we set over here. The only change we need to do here now is to change alpha according to the target alpha we have. So for example, we can do float start alpha and we can get it from canvas group itself. And then over here we take canvas group alpha and make it equals to mathf.lerp. Then we use start alpha, target alpha, and then we need a t, which in our case will be time passed divided by fade duration. Now, let me explain what it does. Essentially, it allows you to pick a number between two values you have. You set start value over here and end value over here, and then you pick a value between them according to the t you pass uh, here. In our case, it's going to be changed according to the time passed we have. So for example, let's say only one second has passed in your while loop. We take that and divide that by fade duration, which in our case is 1.5, and you get 0.66 as a result. This will be used as a t over here, and it will pick 0.66% of the value between start and target alpha. If you go from transparent to visible, it will give you 66% of the visibility. If you go from visible to transparent, it will give you 66% of transparency. And because we update this every frame, right, we wait for the next frame and then do that again, it essentially gives you a smooth transition from visible to transparent or vice versa. I'm gonna quickly give you another example just so we are sure we understand this. Let's say if your time passed is 1.35, which is very close to the end result, and you divide it by pay duration you have. As a result you get 0.9, which will be used as a t over here, and this will allow you to pick 90% of the value between these two. And let's say if you go from visible to transparent, you will have 90% of transparency. So I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, just know that this allows us to do smooth transition of the alpha during the fade duration we have over here. And then when while loop is over, we simply take canvas group alpha and make it equals to target alpha just to snap the result. Now, there are a couple of other things we need to do to avoid possible bugs in the future, but before we do that, let's go ahead and see if coroutine works. We're gonna make a start function in which we're going to start this coroutine. And whenever you want to use a coroutine, you cannot just type name of a method like you usually do. Instead, you need to type start coroutine, change alpha coroutine, and then you give it target alpha. In our case, we tried to make image transparent, so we're gonna give it zero. I'm gonna save this and go back to Unity. Over here, don't forget to assign component and then just simply go to play mode. And you will see fade effect is smooth and nice, which is super cool. Now let's go back to the script and change a couple of things so we are sure we don't produce any bugs in the future. In Unity, don't forget to assign canvas group component and then simply click the play button. And even though game is quite simple, the fade effect definitely makes it feel better and more professional. Now let's go back to the script and change a couple of things so we are sure we don't produce any bugs in the future. 
The main concern here is that when you start a coroutine, it doesn't know if any other coroutine is working at the same time. So if by accident you start multiple coroutines at the same time, it will try to change alpha of the canvas group simultaneously. I hope I said that right. So it will try to change alpha of the canvas group at the same time, right? So we need to be sure we run only one coroutine at a time. For that, we're going to make private coroutine variable, which we can use to store the coroutine we just started. And we're going to call it change alpha coroutine. Then let's make a method, private void fade effect, in which we want to pass target alpha as well. And then we're going to do change alpha coroutine equals to start coroutine of a change alpha coroutine and we give it target alpha. Now, every time we start a coroutine, reference to that coroutine will be saved in this variable. And what you can do is to check if you have active coroutine at the moment, and if you do, you can stop that coroutine and start a new one, just like that. Now, I'm assuming you want to start fade effect from other place in your project, something like game manager or other place you use to control the game. In that case, you can create a couple of public methods and use them. Now, if you found this video useful, please consider subscribing. Uh, don't forget to check my RPG course by the link down below. And if you need video on how to do scene transitions, I have it somewhere here. And I'm gonna say thanks to my Patreons and give special thanks to Siramo89 and Gianni Maroni. Thanks to you guys, these videos are possible.